Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord Father. Indeed, we want to give praise unto you. Lord, yes, even as we look to you in this new year, Lord Father. Lord, we thank you for your invitation to us to come and enter into your presence and to enter into your rest. Lord, we thank you, that Lord, that indeed, O oh God, for you are the one, Lord, who will enable us, will empower us. Father, indeed, O oh God, as we sing this morning, as we worship you this morning, Father, indeed, O oh God, Father, you are the great God, Lord Father. Yes, Lord Father, that will indeed fulfill your purpose here on earth. So, Father, we give praise to you, and Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to come to anoint us and to grant us your understanding grant us revelation this morning so that lord we may know the things that is upon your heart especially for our church here in jmk we thank you and praise you in jesus mighty name we ask amen amen praise the lord and uh, this morning my topic is on work to enter into rest you know uh, if most of for, for those of us who are working in the marketplace you know, especially with companies, in commercial companies where, you know, especially if you are, you know, listed on the stock market, you know, you, you, the companies have to, uh, you know, uh, be able to report good results, yeah, to their shareholders, to their stakeholders. And therefore, each time, you know, when the new financial year were to come about, there will be new sets of uh, quotas, you know, that we all will have to work towards. And that really add a fair bit of uh, load of stress, right, to, 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 to those of us who are responsible for the numbers, yeah. So, so you know, work uh, sometimes uh, is no longer uh, enjoyable because of the, the work pressure that is on us, yeah. But I have good news for you this morning, yes. You know, uh, as we heard from... Uh, from that eight days of fasting and prayer as we heard from the Lord, you know, what is on his heart. And even especially the word that was released for us here in JMK. You know, uh, definitely uh, there's things that we need to respond to. Things that we want to be able to prepare ourselves, right? Even as the Lord were to, uh, you know, uh, uh, show us, reveal to us what is uh, his heart, what are his thoughts that he has for us here in GMK, then definitely we want to be able, you know, to arise and to be able to respond to him, yeah? So, so okay, right, let's uh, go to, to the slides. So, I entitled it, Work to Enter into Rest, but also subtitled it as A Year of his favor, a year of his favor. Now, uh, last week, I was uh, forwarded a link by a good friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine. You know, he, he forwarded to me a link that, uh, you know, there was about this webinar that was uh, by this uh, respected, well-respected uh, mentor pastor here in Singapore. And, uh, you know, he, he was asked about the question, what he thinks about the future like for church for church and uh, what are his takes and what are the the things that uh, you know the uh, when we uh, do church together in this new uh, normal as we all know it uh, what would it be like yeah so now he he shared a few things but i thought that it will be good for us to set for us a kind of a backdrop you know as we look at what the lord has for us whether these are things that we need to keep in mind yeah, so he said that uh, we will never return to normal. That's true because we understand that we are all into a new normal, you know, as it is. Yeah, uh, once the mind, you know, uh, the way that our human uh, f function, the mind function, you know, once the mind has been shifted, he says that it no longer would want to go back to the normal. Right, so when initially we, there's so much resistance, right? Initially, you know, wow, uh, we all got to stay at home, locked down at home, uh, you know, and then we have to work from home, and uh, we find it uh, a bit of struggle, especially, you know, you never get so used to uh, uh, having so close uh, to each other in the home, and uh, it, there's always this this tension, yeah, 
But the moment when we are able to shift ourselves and adjust ourselves, you know, then we find that, hey, uh, there was this uh, 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 Gallup poll that was being done in, in early part of last year in March. And it says that uh, about 60%, right, will not want to go back to office. They will prefer prepare to stay at home, to work from home because they are so used to home because, you know, at home, as, at least uh, when you're tired, nobody will know you can take a nap, you know, yeah. <laughs> or when you're hungry, you know, you can go and uh, make yourself a quick uh, meal in, in the kitchen, right? Yeah, as long as you, you know, need not have to attend any uh, virtual meetings, uh, you know, on the, on, through the internet, yeah. So, so it, it, it's so comfortable now, yeah. So that, you know, it, it comes to a point that people who have got used to it, would not want to go back to office to work. They would prefer to work from home. So now, therefore, what we need to know that as church has also you know, come into the digital space, right? As we have also you know, moved into a digital space, therefore we need to recognize certain things, right? Uh, you know, to, to know whether uh, these are indicators for us as we do church together. One is that uh, the click of the mouse is not relational connection. You know, uh, it is true, right? Uh, when we do virtual meetings, when we uh, go into Zoom for meeting, it's, no, it's not like you know, we, where we used to come together uh, face to face. To, to be able to relate to one another, to see your body language, your emotion and all that, yeah? So, so therefore, we need to understand and mustn't confuse ourselves uh, that, you know, uh, with this Zoom meeting, that it, it actually is a relational uh, a connection. Therefore, it is not uh, because, you know, so through such kind of uh, virtual meetings, it can only effectively transmit or communicate information but not relating to one another in terms of our connection we will still need to meet be able to meet in small group yeah small group so that we could able to relate to one another so that is very important for us to take note of so we like to encourage the church for those especially who haven't been coming to church you know we want you to be still be able to be connected and to connect yourself into a small group. Yeah. So now we also need to understand that you know the reach of our viewing even through the YouTube, right, to the online. Uh, you know, previously probably there may not be so many uh, uh, people who are viewing us online, but now the reach has gone even much more further. You know, surprisingly, uh, when we had this video uh, loaded up, uploaded to the YouTube of uh, Pastor Judith uh, Halim. Uh, you know, it, it has reached uh, 100 over 1,000 viewers. Amazing, yeah? Amazing. Her testimony, her sharing has been able to connect with the people, you know, and, and in, in fact, I understand uh, that she has actually received some uh, uh, people who reach out to her to ask, that, uh, ask her to pray for them, you know. Uh, because of the victory that she has shared about her own walk with God, right? So therefore, it is not to be confused with revival, right? The reach, you know, of viewing doesn't mean that there is, you know, uh, this revival that is, that is taking place. It is not to be confused with that. And viewership is not the same as discipleship, yeah? Amen? Right, so, so therefore, we need to keep... Uh, this in mind when we go forward, you know, uh, regarding how we're going to do church in the future, right? Now, he, therefore, when he shared this, uh, he, he took on the acronym called REST uh, to share about how we should be able to kind of uh, measure ourselves or how we could be able to transform ourselves. So the word REST, and uh, it resonated with me because... Uh, I was preparing for this message. I was preparing. The Lord has put onto my heart that you know, you know. Sometimes when we think about what we need to do, uh, you know, in in this coming year, sometimes it also gives us stress, right? Uh, we feel resisting, you know, to to having to to struggle or to work. 
But the Lord says that, you know, all we need to do is really to enter into His rest. So what does the, the acronym rest uh, 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 spell out? It says that R stands for redefine. We need to redefine success of effectiveness in ministry, right? Uh, our, you know, our aim, therefore, is for transformation rather than viewership. You know, we, we need to be able to see life transform, right? Uh, it is not so much, uh, you know, it's not so much wanting to have as many viewers, uh, as many people, right? But rather the aim of our ministry is to be able to see life being transformed. Right, because you know, in Paul, he always, in his, his epistles to the people, he writes that you know, he is a wise master builder, and one of the things he strives to do is that he desire, and all that he do, he desire to be able to work towards presenting men and women perfect in Christ, perfect in Christ, meaning matured in Christ, the meaning that their life are being transformed into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. So that is our aim. That should be our aim. So the next uh, is, is essential. Prioritize the essential, the fundamentals. What is that which is essential for us in our ministry, you know, even for yourself personally, you know, uh, we need to be able to prioritize, right? For example, for some of our, for us, Probably health is an important priority. So we need to be able to give priority to that. Uh, we need to be able to calendarize uh, you know, uh, for ourselves so that we will remember to do that. Yeah? In the course of our work, in you know, our day, uh, we need to be able to uh, uh, be able to put aside time for exercise. So one of the things that I enjoy uh, doing is that to be able to go on the bicycle and go on to, you know, the, the park. And because it's so refreshing, you know, when you are on the park, uh, you know, uh, you see the greeneries, uh, the water, the, 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 you know, yeah, uh, the waterways, the Pongo waterways. Yeah, it is so refreshing out in the open. Yeah, so, but I have not been able to do that for a year. <laughs> so my, I need to prioritize that I need to be able to calendarize right and put in place that you know no matter what if for that week if I tell myself that I need to go out for at least twice then I must make sure even if I have to adjust my calendar but I must make sure that I could able to right uh, have the opportunity to do that yeah so 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 therefore it is very important for us what is essential what is fundamentals we mustn't compromise so for example our time with god right yeah if we are being caught up with work but we need to adjust and be able to still be able to fit into our calendar right so that we will not miss that out yeah so essential storm proof we need to storm proof ourselves uh, because we know that you know uh, with the current situation environment right there were things that were events that will be stormed that will be coming our ways and they will be sweeping us out from our you know from our feet yeah so therefore we need to be able to disciple ourselves into the very word of god because jesus says that you know if a man hear his word and do it right he will be like one that is building his house on the rock that's right he will be building his house on the rock and not on the sand so that when the storm comes it will still be able to stand amen praise the lord so so therefore we need to storm proof ourselves from the coming storm and how do we do that that is to do and uh, to obey and do his word one thing at a time as the lord reveals to us you know we are to therefore obey right and not to to put it aside the final one is to transform, transform culture, transform our inner scripts and our community. You know, very often you find that uh, the successful companies are those who are able to transform themselves, who are able to adapt themselves, right? Even, you know, in a changing environment, changing landscape, you know, just like for this COVID, the, the companies that could able to survive is because they are already be able to 
transform themselves and be able to survive, uh, to go along with the, the current environment. So therefore, likewise, you know, as a church, right, we must be able to transform ourselves. You know, we need to take the responsibility to look at what are the changes we need to do within, right, so that we could be able to stay, you know, a steadfast, unmovable in the Lord. Amen? Right. So now we have heard from Pastor, our senior pastor Stephen, for that eight days of uh, fasting and prayer, and the two key things that stand out on the very first uh, day of his message was that of this is the year of obedience, obedience unto the Lord, and this is the year of discernment, discernment, right? It's a year of obedience and discernment, and I find that it is so important. In fact, you know, obedience is definitely on the very heart of God, you know, because God desires His very best for us. You know, He desires His very best for us. And uh, when we disobey Him, that means we are missing out what He has actually purposed for us, His very best. And therefore, when, you know, when the people disobey, you know, we, we read about the story of the Israelite people. They circle themselves they in the wilderness for 40 years due to what? Disobedience. Right? Due to disobedience. And the Bible tells us that God was so angry with them, you know, that He said that He will not allow them, you know, to enter into His rest. He will not allow them to cross over into the promised land. So because God actually has prepared, you know, a land flowing with milk and honey, for them to possess as their very own. But yet, you know, they have disobeyed the very word of God and therefore, you know, they were not able to enter into His rest. And so, therefore, the year of obedience is so important for us, right? Because, you know, if, besides the word, uh, what was released to us specifically about JMK is that, you know, we have been hesitant to do the work of God, right? We have been discussing but have not been doing, right? Yeah, so, so in a way that we are also been, not been obeying the Lord, uh, hearing from Him and, uh, you know, and, and doing what He desires from us. So therefore, this year, it is important for us to able to hear clearly and to move accurately, right? Yeah, so now, when I think about the word obedience, right, the thing that comes to my mind is that of lordship, right? It's basically, it's about the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, right? Because, you know, in, in the Old Testament, it says that in 1 Samuel 15, it says that, well, does the Lord delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heat is better than the fat of the rams. And once again, you know, the people who come to Jesus, Jesus said to them, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? You know, what's the use? Why do you just want to give lip service to me and not do the works, the things that I say to you? So therefore, obedience is paramount, right? Obedience is paramount because... I, Unless we choose to obey, the Lord will not reveal His next step to us for our lives. Yeah? So therefore, let us therefore look at how we, are we conducting our life you know, under His Lordship. Lordship is about, am I living my life in Christ Jesus? Right? Living in Him and under His Lordship. Am I living my life relating to my Father, my Father in heaven, living as sons and daughters and obeying His voice? Am I living my life in the power of the Holy Spirit, living with discernment and power? So these are my take when I think about uh, the word obedience, the year of obedience, that it has to do with the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has to do with my abiding in Christ. You know that interestingly, uh, there's a difference between when Paul, in his epistles, when he wrote to the people, right, they, you find that at times he used interchangeably uh, one that of Christ Jesus and that of Jesus Christ. So in my earlier days, I was wondering why Paul chose to write it in that way. 
so I was uh, kind of doing some reading and I thought I found that uh, yeah whenever uh, Paul talked talk about Christ Jesus he he probably uh, relating alluding to what Jesus has done for us on the cross you know when he talked about Jesus Christ is more about the personhood of Jesus Christ right but in fact you know if you look at Romans 1 and uh, in, in just one example of this Paul introduced himself and says that I'm a servant of Christ Jesus. He didn't say that I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. But called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. And then in the next few verses, he says that, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. So you find that there is a difference when Paul writes that he means it differently. You know, Christ Jesus has to do with his lordship, has to do with his kingship, right? The Messiah, Christ, his lordship, his messiahship, his kingship. So therefore, when Paul writes that I'm in, I'm in Christ, I'm submitting myself, submitting myself under the lordship of Jesus Christ, the lordship of Christ Jesus. So therefore, you find that whenever Paul writes, right, you know, when he say that you are made complete in Christ Jesus, it has to do with the Lordship or Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot be, uh, you know, uh, 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 acknowledging him as only your saviour. But in order to be made complete, you need to acknowledge him and you need to submit to him as your Lord. As your Lord. So therefore, it is important for us in this year, you know, to examine ourselves are we living our life under the submission of our Lord Jesus Christ? Right? And 2020 is definitely a year of reset. We all know it, right? Yeah, and uh, definitely, you know, God is calling all of us. He's giving us opportunity. He's molding us. He is trans, you know, He is, trans, he is kind of uh, transiting us into the mode where, you know, where we are so used to to just depend on somebody else, you know, uh, uh, kind of to feed us, to kind of, you know, to, 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 to kind of uh, uh, to help us. But, you know, in that 2020, we are all kept at home where we say that, you know, the, for the first time, the whole world celebrate, you know, the Passover in, at the home. So God is moving us into a home setting and God is definitely resetting us back to be found in his presence to be found in his presence right to be able to hear him clearly you know because you know because there are things that are going to come that will unsettle us and settle us and unless and until we are found in you know in his presence abiding in him right we will not be able to be able to be receiving his his blessing and his protection because you know you remember the time when Jesus was about to go to the cross he knows of the impending uh, you know destruction that will come upon Jerusalem after he is gone right and uh, he cried out you know oh Jerusalem Jerusalem the city that kills the prophets and stoned those who are sent to it how often would I have gathered your children together? You know, and uh, as a hand gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. So God is asking you and I, are you and I willing, you know, to gather ourselves into his presence because there are storms that is going to come our way that we will need to be found in this because it's only when we are found under the shadow of the mighty that we know that we will be protected. Amen? Right. So, living with discernment and power. Living with discernment and power. We need to increase our intake of the Word because, you know, the Word is the truth. The Word is the Spirit of God. Yeah. And through, fam and, you know, that we need to have a personal intake of the Word through family authors and to the teaching and the of the word equipping our children, our youth, our young adults, and also our fathers in our midst. It is so important because the word is both our defensive and offensive weapon. Without the word, we will not be able to, you know, defend ourselves from the 
the, 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 the arrows, the vows of the devil. Yeah? So therefore, we need to be able to strengthen ourselves. We, need, we must be able to get ourselves into the Word because there will be deception that will be coming along our way. Right? Yeah, because deception is Satan's very key strategy. He will deceive us. Even the brethren, you know, the Word of God tells us that even the brethren will be deceived will be deceived by the enemy because there will be, like uh, Pastor John says, that the most anointed uh, false prophets this day is the media, right? The media. The media has indeed deceived many of us, right? So therefore, we need to be able to, you know, um, have the intake of the Word of God because it is only when you have the Word, the truth, You'll be able to validate against what is false. You know, just like in the bank, we were told that you know, uh, when the, the teller would receive your money and start to count, right? Uh, they must be able to recognize the note that you give to them, whether is it a fake one or is it a true one. And how will they train? They will only train to recognize true, the true notes. They will not train to recognize any other fake notes. So therefore, it is very important that unless you know the truth, you will not be able to discern that which is false. Because only you have the benchmark to be able to recognize. Yeah? So now, we need to be able to move in the power of God. Yeah? Because you know, one of the things that I was reminded uh, when God uh, you know, called Moses, Go and deliver my people from Egypt. Go and face Pharaoh. And what did Moses say? Lord, how would Pharaoh know that you have sent me? And what did God say? What is in your hand? What is in your hand? The rod. And the Lord told him to throw it on the ground and it turned into a serpent. Right? There was a power demonstration. Right of the encounter of God. So, so therefore, I believe in the days to come, you know, if you've been following the news, recently you have the case of a 16-year-old Protestant a young man, right, a teenage. You know, he was all alone by himself in his room and then he had came out with this plan, detailed plan of how he's going to you know, take down the, 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 the lives of the people, right? You know, if that would ever to, re, to have happened, you know what is the implication? That means to say that, you know, the religious harmony law will need to be tightened, right? You and I cannot go around and tell people that Jesus is the way, the only way, the truth and the life. Because that would cause disharmony. So what is the implication if you cannot go and share to someone and say that, you know, Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. Just like you, when Moses go to tell Pharaoh, God has sent me to, to command you to release the people, set my people free. It's only when through that power encounter, right, that Pharaoh was willing to release. So therefore, we need to be able to, you know, the, the, the network of pastors, uh, when we gathered, we, have, we are praying for Singapore. We are praying for the revival of this land. We are praying that indeed the Lord will restore back to us, restore back to us the power, you know, the, the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts that we have heard so much in, in the earlier days, right, of the, of the move of God's power, right, among the, and, and it brings about the fear of the Lord, it brings about revival in the land. So we definitely need that and we must pray for that and ask that the Lord will empower us by His Holy Spirit to be empowered by His might. So I was looking up what the, the word that was released to us for JMK, there were four things that I could able to summarize. One was that says that, teach my word to the people. Teach my word to the people. 
And so that has to do with discipleship. Right? The second thing was that be ready, be prepared. That means to say that God wants us to be ready and be pre prepared to be able to share the good news, the gospel of his kingdom. Right? Do not be entangled with this world. Right? You know, because, you know, like we say that the media is the most anointed force prophets, you know, then therefore, you know, very often, you know, the minds of the young are so amendable, you know, it's just like plastic, they can easily be molded, and uh, we, they, they are so easily influenced by the media, right, you know, by the, the mobile device that they have, and to be able to check out what is uh, new and what is, you know, trendy. Right, and they are so easily influenced, and you know, they wouldn't. And if they do not have a worldview, a biblical worldview of their understanding of who they are in Christ, of uh, who God is, and why do they believe, then you find that they could easily be standing on shaky ground. So, therefore, we need to be able to transform worldviews, right? You know, uh, we will talk about that a bit more. Then the fourth thing is about bunker up, walk and listen to his voice. So that means it requires us to build our, our prayer altars, our personal, our family, our corporate prayer altars. And that's what we have been doing. We are encouraging people to come you know, back to church and so that we can pray together. Not only pray, but be able to, as what we have been told, encourage to able to corporately hear the voice of God. Right, definitely Jesus says, you know, you know, one of the things that Jesus says is that, you know, the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy, but I come to give you life, life more abundantly, more abundantly, that means exceedingly more than what life is being experienced here. But he went on to say that, you know, he's the shepherd and his sheep hear his voice. So therefore, in order to you, for you, you and I to be able to experience that abundant life, we must be like the sheep that could able to hear the shepherd voice. Because when you are not able to hear, you will not be led into living that abundant life. So therefore, men, therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to hear what the Lord is telling us so that you and I will be able to enter into that abundant life. Amen? Right, so teach the word. Jesus was intentional when he was on earth. He was given only three and a half years, I believe, three and a half years to able to disciples, leave behind disciples that were able to bring about the gospel to the entire world. He was only given three and a half years to do that assignment, to do that mission. And so therefore, when he was on earth, he was very intentional. He wastes no time, you know, to, to do any other thing, but he was very intentional. He brought the twelve with him so that they can be with him, that, that he could able and, and he can disclose to them, you know, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the things of the kingdom of God. You know, because it's only when he could able to explain to them. He says that he told the disciples, it was not given to other people to know, but it's only given to you to know the kingdom, the secrets of the kingdom of God. So therefore, you know, he was very intentional. And program was never his concern. Program was never his concern because program will bring about stress. You know, I remember <laughs> recently we, we had a dinner with a group of, uh, you know, uh, 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 friends, you know, in the, in the home. And uh, we, we were sharing, and one of this couple that was from another church before, an uh, established church, a big church, you know, they were burnt out. They were burnt out by the program, you know, that so much so that they could not take it that they have to leave the church. Because, you know, the expectation was upon them to be able to bring in people, to invite friends, and they must be able to, you know, uh, uh, meet the quota. Meet the quota, you know. So, so you have different zones that are competing uh, among themselves, right, to see who can bring in more. So therefore, at times you have to, you know, do the uh, uh, not so good 
just to show that you are actually uh, having your friends or relatives or whatever, you know, to just to clock the numbers. So they are terribly burnt out. And so they have to... <laughs> so each time when they are being approached, you know, to, to take up responsibility, you know, they have to decline because they, they will not want to be in loaded with a program. So program was never Jesus' concern. His concern was only with man. Man was his method. Man was his method and teachable man. Teachable man and woman who are willing to able to learn about the kingdom of heaven. So therefore, you know, we need to be able to focus on our three generation to be able to teach them the word that just so we have talked about you know, among the, the, you know, the youth ministry, the young adults, you know, and also the zone ministry. And uh, I believe that one of the things that, uh, that is on the heart of the, the leaders of this ministry was that they want to be able to build relational. We find that, you know, it is only when we are able to build relation with people, you know, that we could able to bond together closely. And this is what we want to do in, in, in our church, in JMK, is to be able to bond people to, together. And we, we may have to use some of these events, you know, like a family days or some kind of uh, you know, celebration so that we could bring people together. And I believe that we have to start with the very young, the youth, right? They are the youth. If we can, you know, uh, work out a certain mentoring program that we can bring somebody who are more senior and be able to build the kind of relationship with them, you know, and to walk with them, walk life with them. And I think that would definitely help. And one of the things we want to do for the uh, zone, uh, for the fathers, is to be able to build uh, communities of fathers, right? A community of fathers that were able to encourage. You see, the, the thing is that, we, you know, when we have a, a, a strong family, right, we naturally have a strong and healthy church. So therefore, it is important for us that we must be able to give some form of a handles to, you know, to able to build the community of fathers in our midst. You know, because, you know, Sunday school can only do as much teaching as they can on a weekly basis. But in the family, you know, when you have the parents, when you have the fathers, we're able to bring the family together, be able to read the Bible together, be able to pray together, that would definitely strengthen the bond of the family. And, and to be able to, you know, assure the children, right, place confidence in their heart of who they are. You know of their sexuality, so that they will not be swayed by the wings of this world to say that no, you are uh, actually a man in a woman's body or a woman in a man's body. No. So in order to do that, we need the father. We need the father to be able to embrace, right, the real uh, sexuality of the individuals. Yeah, it, that has to begin with the family. So this is one thing that we strive to do and to be ready with and be prepared to share the, the gospel. So this year, what we're going to do is that uh, we want to decentralize the, uh, you know, the celebration, the celebration of uh, Good Friday, Good Friday as well as also uh, of Christmas celebration. Usually we will have, you know, a focus a central event, but I think this year, we would want to decentralize it and move it to the zone, the cell group to think about program. You know, we, we, I ever did that before and I think it, it is, it, it is uh, non-threatening. Sometimes when you invite people to the church, uh, it might kind of get some resistance. But when you invite people, your friends to your home, you know, for a celebration, uh, they, will, you know, they will look forward to it. So I remember once I did help to organize a, an event for Christmas where, you know, we, we will serve food, you know, and then we have uh, games, we have ice-breaking games, we have uh, uh, games for, for people to, 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 to play. And then also we finally will have someone to share his testimony, right? Yeah, and I think that that is uh, definitely a way for us to be able to reach out to people, right? So, so this is something we can think about, we can plan even for the 
uh, Good Friday. I believe that right now media, that one that we subscribe to, do have you know certain uh, uh, program or certain uh, kind of videos, right? That you we can use, you know, for this Good Friday uh, event. I believe that they will come up with certain uh, video, uh, you know, uh, that could able to help us to host that. Yeah. So now, so therefore we will need to. You know, live our life not just having a form of godliness, but and, and denying the power within. We need to live life that is filled with the fullness of the Spirit, right? Filled with the fullness of the Spirit and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's only when a person is subjected himself to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, then the Spirit of God could come into the person and be able to fill us fully. Do not be entangled with this world. We say that transform, transforming worldview. You know, when a person comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ, they, it encompasses three levels of, you know, of his understanding, you know, of his mind. The Bible tells us that we not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right, yeah. So therefore, it is important for us, you know, uh, to be able to know whether the person has really, really uh, understand, uh, you know, what uh, the, the word of the Lord and have actually received it into his heart is by looking at the three areas of his life. One is that of his behavior. Has his behavior changed? You know, if his behavior we has not been, is if his behavior continues to be primarily based on tradition rather than Christian belief, then it becomes a pagan ritual. A pagan ritual. Nothing more than following, you know, the, 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 what has been, that, the, that the world is doing. Yeah? So, so if there's no change of behavior, then definitely it will tell us that the person has not fully understood. I remember that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we Chinese, we have a lot of tradition. Uh, I, I remember once my uh, colleague was sharing that, you know, uh, you know he, uh, because she's a lady and uh, she has given birth and uh, she was saying that they were not allowed to, I mean, from probably passed down from the, the parents, from her mother, they are not allowed to wash their hair during that confinement period. Yeah, <laughs> so they can only powder their, their hair and, and clean up, you know, brush up their hair. So so it's a kind of uh, you know a tradition that was passed down. So if if we were to as Christian, if we were to stay on to that kind of behavior and have not changed, that means our belief system has not changed, right? Yeah. So if our behavior, yeah, if 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 it is a change only of beliefs and not behavior, then James, the book of James tells us that you know our faith is dead. Right? Our faith is dead. If there is no change, you know, of 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 our behavior, yeah, then our faith is dead. Therefore, if if it's our worldview is not transformed, we may just be having a form of Christianity and not its essence, right? Our worldview. Uh, what is our worldview? Worldview is basically the lenses that we wear when we look at things that is happening around us. The lenses that we wear. It comes with all different kind of uh, lenses because we are brought up, you know, with a different background, uh, culture and all that. So therefore, we tend to carry with us less lens when we view the world, right? If you view the world, that if you view that with the lens that you know, uh, there's no good in this in 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 a lot in people, then you forever when you look at people, perceive people, you will you will tell yourself, you know, this guy or this girl is you know is not good and is going to do me harm, right? If that is your worldview, so therefore it is important for us as we, uh, you know, get ourselves into the word of God as we as we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be able to place ourselves into, transform our worldview, right, with the biblical worldview, so that, you know, in every of our viewing of things, of information that comes our way, right, we could able to view it with the right perspective. 
Yeah, so this is very important. Buckle up, walk, and listen to his voice. Uh, that is about prayer, right? You know, I, I was uh, sharing with the zone group. We were studying the book of James, chapter 5, the closing few verses. And it was about, you know, uh, talking about prayer. It was, James was encouraging the people. He said that if any of you <coughs> have been troubled, let them pray. You know, is anyone happy? Let him sing a song of praise. If any among you sick, let them call the elders of the church, you know, to pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And then he went on to say, right, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And he says that Elijah was a human being, human being, just like you and I, we are human beings, you know. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land. And for three and a half years, again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So what is James alluding to when he brought about this, you know, saying that, you know, look, Elijah is, none, is not anything more than you and I. He's just another human being. If he could pray and ask God to stop the rain, don't you think you can also? Right? If someone is sick, you know, all you have to do is to go and call the elders. Maybe the elders may be in another town, but never mind. Call the elders and you know, let the elders bring the, the oil and anoint him and pray. So, and, and, and if he's sick, he will be healed. James is so, so confident. Why is it so? What is James alluding to? When he, when he came up with these verses, when he came up with this conviction that you and I can also do the same. And it strikes me to know that I believe that it is because, it's because they believe, Jane believed, right? Being the elders, you probably is someone that is walking with the Lord. There's someone that is close to the Lord, who hears the Lord. Right? And that's why James said that, hey, if you are in trouble, pray, you know, so that God can hear you. Right? And, and, and Elijah is so close with God that he can hear the voice of God when God told him what he needs to do. So when he challenged the, the, the 500 false prophets up there, right, he must have definitely heard the voice of God to tell him, go and challenge them. I will be with you. I will send fire from heaven and burn up the offerings, challenge them to bring all the water and pour onto it, to, to wet it, you know, so that it will never be able to burn up. He must have definitely heard the voice of God in order to have that kind of confidence to stand before the prophet because otherwise he'll be killed. He knows that he's going to be killed if it doesn't happen, right? So therefore, it begets us as Christians that we need to be able to abide ourselves in God and be able to hear from Him so that you and I can do great exploit. Amen? Yeah, so therefore it is important for us to enter into that time of prayer, to find ourselves, be close, drawn into the presence of God and be able to hear Him. Right? So, but I like to bring ourselves, you know, having heard about all this is required of us, I want to bring ourselves that because, you know, the Bible tells us that, yes, you know, work can be uh, painful at times because in Genesis, because we are living in a fallen world. In Genesis, it tells us that, you know, because of what Adam has done, because of what they have done, they have sinned, and, and because of sin, that God says that curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it and all the days of your life. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. You know, so therefore, you know, you find that uh, we have to slot, we have to work so hard, you know, if we want to uh, be able to think of getting a, a beautiful house, or a car and all that, we know that, oh, we have to save up, we have to work hard, maybe we have to do the two, two jobs, you know, on, the same, on that same uh, week or whatever, so that we can accumulate enough funds, right? So today, you find that, you know, uh, my friend texts me, uh, you know, say that people are queuing at the Toto 
Uh, <laughs> why? Because uh, New Year, you know, they have a bonus uh, yeah, uh, draw, you know, uh, 9 million, 9 million draw. So people are all uh, standing, you know, uh, in queue, right? Why? So that if they strike, they can sit back. They don't have to toy, right? So hard. So it's, you know, so you find that, you know, we are all so tired, you know, about having to toy under this earth curse system. Yeah? So that, you know, if we can find a quick solution to it, we would want to. Even in spite that, you know, the percentage of striking that is almost zero. But still, we want to have that hope. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so, so you can just tell us that, you know, we definitely are finding a solution to get out of this system. So we, we are mentally conditioned by the kingdom of this world, kingdom of darkness and the fear and to work hard to survive. Right, and, and, and uh, therefore you find that it is, we think of pragmatic ways, you know, how to go about, you know, the solution, right? But by doing so, we tend to remove God from the formula because we only look at ourselves, we only assess our capability. But actually, uh, we need to do more than that because, you know, when Jesus uh, was with the, the multitudes, right? When they were came all gathering, 5,000 of them gathering to, to hear from him, you know, and one of the things that he told his disciples was that, hey, guys, can you please go and feed them? They are hungry. They cannot be sitting here the whole day without food. Right? And what did his disciples came back to him and say? Master, are you joking or not? Huh? <laughs> you know, that means it will take you know, six months or more of my salary in order to feed this multitude of 5,000. It is not possible. So when we think, if, if our first reaction is to look at our own capability, then we will naturally come back to the Master and say that, Lord, it is not possible. It is not possible, right? So unless and until we understand how the kingdom of God operates. There are certain laws and you know, principles that the way the kingdoms operate. So that's why Jesus said that, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So he's telling us that, look guys, the kingdom of God operates differently from that of the kingdom of this earth. You need to understand. Right? If you don't, then you will be subjecting yourself just to move in the, in the kingdom of this earth. You know, you, you, you may be thinking that, oh, from me, from, from here, Singapore, to go to Penang, I'll probably need uh, eight, nine hours of driving. But if we know that actually there is another law that says that, hey, you, you can actually take a flight and fly there and within one hour, you'll be there. Right? So if we subject ourselves to the law of sin and not to the law of the Spirit, then we will be confined, we will be not be able to operate in the kingdom of God's principle. Amen? Make sense? Amen. Right, yeah. So therefore, we need to know that God wants you and I to be able to operate in his kingdom laws and principle and not based on so that's why when you know the prince the, the disciple brought that five loaves and two fishes and you know he he brought that and then he sent it and he gave thanks right he broke it right he gave thanks and he passed it to the people and he, you know basically what he's doing is that he is presenting it into the kingdom of God into the kingdom ways of operation so that it will multiply, right? And be able to provide for the people. Because the Bible tells us Jesus actually already know what he wants to do. He just wants to test and he wants to demonstrate to the disciples that this is how the kingdom of God operates. Yeah? Amen. So going forward, you and I need to know and need to learn how the kingdom of God operates so that we were able to flow with it and not have to <sighs> take me another six months. 
right? Yeah. So Hebrew chapter four verse nine says that. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. So you remember the creation story. Man was created on the sixth day. Sixth day. When God has prepared everything, you know, uh, from the from the from the preparing the earth, preparing all the plants, all the fruit trees, and everything so nicely, just like in a nursery, everything is prepared, ready for the baby to come on board. Yeah. So everything, just as the song says that God has provided everything so that you may come. So he had provided everything, and on the sixth day he created man because everything has been prepared for him, so that on the sixth day he's created, he has everything that he needs to be able to live life abundantly. That was what God intended, live life abundantly here on earth, right? Because he makes all the provision, all the provision in the Garden of Eden for man to be able to thrive. Amen? Yeah. But the Bible tells us that God completes his whole creation on the sixth day and on the seventh day he rested. He rested. Why? Because when he created man on the sixth day, so that man were able to step into the seventh day of his rest. Right? Why, he, why did he choose to create him on the sixth day? So that at the same time, man could able to enter into his rest. Because God rested on the seventh day. Amen? Amen? So it makes sense. It makes sense that why God instituted the Sabbath. The Sabbath. The Sabbath is a day of rest so that you do not work at all. And not only the Sabbath day, but the Sabbath year. The Bible tells us that the Israelite must not work. They must not farm the land. Right? It must be a Sabbath rest for the land. And not only the Sabbath, but a jubilee year. A jubilee year that takes over three years three continuous years of not working, right? Of, but you can live off the land, right? So, so when the people was in the, in the desert, when God provides them from manna, from heaven, He told them that you are to go out and collect, you know, but on the sixth day, you collect more. Because on every day, if you were to collect more and try to keep it, it will rot, but on the sixth day, you can collect more. So that on the seventh day, you are to rest. You don't need to go out and look for it. Yes? So therefore, the principle of the Sabbath is very important for us. We cannot be striving with our own ability, our own strength to go and collect and to do the work of God. No. You and I are to go and abide ourselves into His rest so that, you know, we will receive His blessing. Because God blessed the seventh day and set it apart as holy. As holy, yeah? So, therefore, we must operate in that principle in this year, right? The year of obedience. The year of obedience. When we obey, it is resting ourselves abiding into His presence. That is what we are called to do, to obey. So then we can able to do the work that He has called us to. Amen? Amen. Right. So the Sabbath day is a picture about what Adam and Eve would have enjoyed living here on earth, but He has lost, they have lost it. But God is going to restore it back. Right? Uh, the Sabbath is also a way of getting us to pause just like what we have done pause and stop right from our doing right so that we could we will not be like the you know the one that is running forever on the treadmill until we drop yeah but rather that we will bring our focus back to God who is our source so that was the intent of the Sabbath rest so therefore, Colossians tells us, let no one do, you know, uh, judge you. 
right, or what you eat or drink in regard to religious festival and new moon and celebration or Sabbath day. These are only a shadow of things to come, right? Now, this is the thing that we need to know. The reality, however, is found in Christ. The reality is found in Christ. Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. He is the Sabbath. He came and He came on earth. He fulfilled the Sabbath. What was instituted before in the Old Testament was a pointing to what is to come. And what is to come is that of Jesus Christ. That of Christ Jesus. He came to complete that. And He came to be the Sabbath rest to all of us. So therefore, that's why it is important for you and I to abide in Him because He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Yes, He went around on Sabbath to heal the sick because He is the Lord of the Sabbath. So therefore, we need to be able to recognize that you know, our call is to be able to be found in Him, in His presence. Jesus, when He first started His ministry, when he, after He was you know, uh, baptized, he, he came into the synagogue, and the first thing that was given to him was, you know, to read from the scripture, right? And he was turned to Isaiah 61, uh, verse 1 to 2, and said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness for the prisoners. Amen. To proclaim good news to the poor. Right? To put, and then he, he finishes, he didn't complete the sentence. He finishes to say that to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he stopped there and he sat down. And then after that, he said that the scripture is fulfilled today in your presence. So what he's saying that he is the Sabbath. He is the one who came to, to proclaim the Lord's favor, the year of Jubilee, right? He came to complete, he came to fulfill. And therefore, this is what he is able to do, to go and heal the sick, to go and proclaim good news to the poor, right? And to bind up the broken heart. And, you know, Isaiah talks about you and I what we are going to call to do because, you know, he stopped, the, he stopped at the vengeance because he has not completed, you know, his, he has not died on the cross, he has not completed his mission yet. But the moment when he completed his mission, the vengeance of God came right to, you know, over the enemy that make it a public shame, right? That is what it means by the vengeance of the Lord. So now you and I, uh, the continuation of Isaiah 61, it says that you and I are to go and comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the joy, oil of joy instead of mourning, and government praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness or planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. You and I are called to be the oaks of righteousness, right? So how are we going to accomplish that? It's only when you recognize that the Lord Jesus is accomplishing that through you and I, when we abide in Him. Amen? All right, yeah, so this is what we need to do as we come to the close that we need to abide in Christ, no, recognizing that He is our Sabbath rest. So let us not try to strive with our own ability. When we, when we think about just now, you know, I really appreciate the, the worship team, you know, that they bring us to focus on what that is on the very heart of God. You know, He called us to be that in Isaiah 61, that we will go to the nations. Yeah. So listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, come together and hear Him corporately, and He will provide the instruction, you know. It was after they have been satisfied, after they have eaten, you know, they actually miss out what was left over. But the Lord Jesus told them, 
go and collect the leftover. So he specifically gave them instruction that there will be ample supply. You just have to go and collect. Right? But they miss it out, you know, because they were just satisfied with the present, with what they've eaten. But if we were to be willing to listen, the Lord will give us the right instruction, what we need to do going forward. Going forward so that you and I can be more than conquerors, that you and I can be the overcomer. Amen? Amen? So let us rise. Let us rise and give thanks to the Lord for what He's going to do in and through us as we abide in Him. Right? As we abide in Him because He and He alone will accomplish by His zeal. The Bible tells us that by His zeal, He will accomplish His purpose here on earth for you and I. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.